So if you find that your lid is a little bit loose and you're worried about that the moisture might escape, a really simple solution is just to use a piece of parchment paper and that helps your lid fit nice and snug on your slow cooker. The next thing you can take a look at is how your slow cooker cooks. If there is a hot spot or a warm spot that cooks quicker and higher heat than another location, one of the ways you can avoid getting burnt food in your slow cooker is to rotate your insert. So the easiest thing you can do is just take some hot pads to protect your hands, take out your insert, rotate it just like that, and replace the insert inside your slow cooker. Now if you like to come home to an already cooked meal in your slow cooker, one of the things you can do to make it easy for yourself in the morning before you leave for work is to do all of your prep work the night before. Cut your vegetables, chop your meat, anything you need to do. That way you can just throw it into your slow cooker, turn it on, and leave for work. Now another important thing to keep in mind is choosing the correct recipe. If you choose a recipe that only needs to be cooked a shorter period of time, four to five hours, you can come home to find that your meal has been overcooked, maybe even burnt. So choosing the correct recipe is also very important. Now along with choosing the correct recipe, of great importance is choosing the correct cut of meat. Choosing something like a pork shoulder that has nice marbling in it or chicken thighs, these cuts of meat can cook longer and stay juicier in the slow cooker than something like say a chicken breast or a pork loin. Something else that you can do that's really helpful to maintaining great flavor and a juicy cut of meat is to sear your meat first. Searing your meat does two things. It locks in the juices into your meat, keeping it nice and tender and juicy, but it also gives you great caramelized flavor. It's important to keep in mind that certain types of vegetables, particularly dense root vegetables, take longer to cook than other types. You wanna make sure that you cut these to the proper size so that they cook evenly and are done at the same time as your other vegetables. Now some root vegetables actually take longer to cook than other varieties, so you want to add those to the bottom of your slow cooker before you add your meat and other vegetables and liquid. That way it helps them cook at the same time as your less dense vegetables. Now another thing you can do to ensure that your meals cook well inside your slow cooker is making sure that you don't underfill or overfill your slow cooker. If you underfill your slow cooker, your meal can burn. If you overfill your slow cooker, it can overflow the top and make a big mess. Who wants that? So the proper way to fill your slow cooker is about halfway to three quarters full. So if you just finished slow cooking a nice roast in your slow cooker and you've got lots of liquid in your pan, don't discard that liquid. You can thicken up that liquid with cornstarch or butter and flour and make a nice gravy for your roast. Another thing you can do to really give your slow cooked meal a nice finishing touch is to just give it a little bit of citrus or some fresh herbs just to brighten it up and give it a nice zing of flavor. And there you go. I hope you've enjoyed watching me here today. For more tips, tricks, and lots and lots of slow cooker recipes, don't forget to visit tasteofhome.com.